Hey, everybody. It is an amazing day in the Queen City. And today, you have the pleasure of joining us for our very first Hey, girl, let's talk. Radio One Charlotte, an Urban One company. And we have lots of thoughts and uh, feelings and all kinds of things about our lives. And we thought it'd be a good idea to sit around at the table, of course, proverbial, pr proverbially uh, video wise right now, um, virtually, I guess is the word I'm looking for and talk about some things. So today I'm joined by my friends and I want them to introduce themselves. Olympia D, why don't we start with you? Hey, I am Olympia D, 105.3 R&B. And of course, it's uh, great to be here with you guys. And of course, she, to have some girl time. I love it. <laughs> I'll go ahead and go next. I'm, yeah. I'm Madison James uh, from Mix 107.9. And it's great to just be here with a group of women and we can you know, talk about things that we deal with on a daily basis. And I'm next, I guess. I'm Holly Hayes. I, um, on the, I'm on Mix 107.9 as well. Um, after Madison every day. Um, and I'm very excited to be part of this, just an, an, a nice organic conversation amongst the ladies or whoever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ladies for now, but we welcome everybody. Yeah, we welcome all. So, hey girl, let's talk. Y'all y'all ready for it? Yeah, ready. let's go. Ready. Well, okay, so our first topic that we picked, um, of course, we've been living in a really complicated world. It's been kind of crazy for the last year plus now. Um, we're in the middle of the pandemic. We were basically on lockdown for months. And then more recently, we've been allowed to, well, some of us have decided to come out and play. But we know that there's a variant. Numbers are continuing to rise. So we've been literally in this tornado of a storm that none of us has ever seen before. How has this been for each of you? Holly, why don't you go first? Wow. Um, I'm going to say it's been quite challenging, I, um, I think, for everyone. But I had three in college when all of this went down. So oh, wow. they all came home with their entire... Um, existence. They're all of their furniture, all of their appliances, all of their animals, everyone came home and their world stopped. And it was complete chaos for the past year. It was up until a couple of weeks ago when they went back to school. Um, so it was, it, it was challenging having them all back here. And I felt badly for them as well, because my son um, was the first to graduate um, of my three and he didn't get to walk the stage. I know it's wow. like, you know, he didn't care. I was more upset because he worked really hard on that. Um, he was double major at Wilmington. And then I was like, you have to walk that stage. And then his internship, um, he was supposed to go to Alaska for a medical internship and it was canceled. And then they canceled it again. It was kind of like a lot of deflating moments, but yeah. um, on the other side of it, and I don't know if you, moms out there will agree it was kind of nice having them home i don't want to tell them that um, <laughs> but it was kind of like a cozy really long summer vacation having them here and um now they're gone i'm kind of sad <laughs> but, madison how about you how's it been for you um you know a lot of things in the pandemic for me some positives i'm gonna take from um i got married during the pandemic Yay! Um, Yay! So something, you know easy to do Yes, we went to the courthouse and knocked it out. Uh, so, but, but really, but with the pandemic, it, it caused me to, to evaluate relationships. It caused me to evaluate friendships. It, it caused me to also prioritize things that are important. Things before the pandemic we thought were important. We're on this, this will of not stopping, then understanding that, you know, the pause was needed. You know, and unfortunately, it was a pandemic, but the pause was needed. Because I don't know about you all, but being back in the building, it has like a refreshing sense to it because you missed it. You yeah. know, we took so many things for granted, the everyday monotonous uh, schedule of life to go, you know what? It, it's a privilege to be able to go into work. It's yeah. a privilege to have your health. Um, so I will say, you know, that kind of was very helpful. It, it, and, and also those of us with older parents, I have older parents, that side was a little bit stressful, uh, not being able to go see them, you know, for long periods of time, being that, you know, I'm, I'm far away, but then you have the pandemic, you're waiting for the vaccine, and you're waiting for like all these, all these things until then you're just kind of sitting at your house. So 
I'm just glad to hopefully be on the other side of it. But I, I will say from the pandemic, I took away just being more grateful, to be honest. Yeah. Just more grateful. I think we can all say that. Oh, how was it for you? Man, boy, oh boy. Look, <laughs> I realized that I needed to slow down. And it also yeah. gave me an opportunity to kind of bond with my daughter and my family. Um, I would have to agree with Madison, of course, when it comes down to being able to visit your family, we had to change the way that we did things. Normally, we would meet at my mom's house, sit on the porch and or even be in the house and just have a good time and do Sunday dinner. And then we had to move outside and our social distancing because I'm like, I didn't want to get my parents sick. Yeah. Um, there were so many things that, that happened. I did get a chance to drop some weight. So I started focusing in on my fitness and just spending more time with myself because you know, Madison, as you said, we're on this rat race and we're always here, there and everywhere. We got this going on. We got that going on. The pandemic, when everything shut down, we had an opportunity to kind of look at ourselves and say, hmm, how do I keep myself busy? How can I keep myself healthy? What can I do to keep myself entertained? What have I not done for myself that I'm always doing for other people? So it gave me a chance to say, hey, it's time to take care of Olympia. And so that's what I did. And so I really, really focused in on me. And of course, you know, the family is always taken care of, but I took a little bit more time for myself. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. One thing that I learned, I experienced some of the same things you all did, Holly. I went through the whole graduation experience, kind of being bummed for my daughter who was graduating with her master's and yeah. trying to keep her spirits up. But also, you know, mourning the opportunity myself to celebrate her was a little hard, but you find, you know, you find ways to celebrate, find different ways to celebrate. The other thing that I learned during the pandemic was that it's really, really important to build a place at home that you like to come home to. So that if, you know, God forbid this ever happens again, or yeah. just in, in everyday life, that you're happy to come home and be home and be home with who you're home with. It just really refocused and um, uh, really kind of re-emphasized for me how important it is that no matter what you're doing out there, to build a home that you like to come back to. Now, Olympia, I want to come back to something that you were talking about. Girl, how in the world did you manage to lose weight in the middle of the pandemic? I know Madison has some help, but <laughs> here's my thing. Because, all right, so you know I'm a busybody. I have to have something going on all the time. So for me, um, with my daughter, she was going virtual and I was like, you know, we need to take a break. We need to go outside. We need to do something. So we started this ritual. She actually learned how to drive during the pandemic because she was like, come on, let's go down to the parking lot. So the but deal the streets was, were free. Nobody <laughs> out there. So we can do whatever we want to. There was nobody at the store. So literally we would be in the parking lot of Hobby Lobby running. And so what she did so many laps or whatever the case may be, she earned the right to drive around. So like I said, oh, wow. she actually learned how to drive wow. during the pandemic. And um, I'm happy to say she just recently got her driver's license. She officially got her driver's license uh, last Saturday. And so I'm excited. And so, like I said, the pandemic brought about some good things for us. And, you know, like I said, just give you an opportunity to kind of slow things down. So I enjoyed it. But yeah, I'm down like eight pounds, Mel. Girl, well, I think I picked your eight up. Madison, I know you're the fitness guru. How was everything for you? Was it more difficult for you? Um, a little bit. You guys saw me go off screen because the, the puppy was chewing on my, my workout shoes. And I was like, oh, no, I love it. Uh -huh. girl talk, I have to wait. <laughs> like, Priorities. Before the pandemic started, I was actually, because I'm a bodybuilder and I compete. I was actually prepping and competing for, for an upcoming show. And when everything shut down, it was like, okay, can't get to the gym. So, so my husband and I, we have all of this. Don't, don't ask why. That's a whole other story. But equipment <laughs> like tires and ropes and sandbags and lots, j just stuff for basically like a boot camp. And we would go out to the park. We would have that out there. And then as the pandemic seemed like it wasn't going away, I don't know if you guys remember this, the chicken shortage and mm -hmm. I eat a yeah. lot of food. I eat, I eat every time. All I do is eat. It's like a second, second job. So I'm like, <laughs> what are we going to do? I got to prep. Can't get chicken. I'm going to the grocery store fighting people over chicken, fighting people over <laughs> rice. But I was just like, what is going on? So I ended up having to put that, put that on pause. Uh, a couple of teammates of mine, they still did. I was like, more power to y'all. Because guess what? The stage ain't going nowhere. Like, mm -hmm. back to your point, Melanie, about what's going on at home. Yeah. What's going like, like, 
we're trying to act like things are normal and they're not. What do we need to focus on at home? So my husband and I, we started working out together because typically we go in the gym. I go my way. He goes his way. Because like you said, Olympia, it's my time. Like working out for me really is my time. Yeah. I don't really work out much with people because with, with our job. So we're always, everyone's taking pieces of us. So yeah. that's like my hour that no one can have a piece of me. So with the pandemic, I had to get creative. We had to get super, super creative. You know, I started cooking. I already cooked a lot. I started cooking even more because the restaurants were down. The restaurants were closed. So my husband started making comments like, you know what? We don't even need to go to that pizza place anymore. You make a really good. <laughs> then, 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 then it would be like a couple weeks later, you know, we really don't even need to go out to eat. I said, pause. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that you enjoyed all this, but you created a monster there. I did. Yeah. I did. But it, but like to Melanie's point though, it said stuff we had kind of got away from because you're so busy doing your own thing. And I know how I grew up. We were busy, had schedules, but mom always cooked. Mom, yeah. you know, mom and dad were working. It wasn't like you just go through the drive-through, grab something. You know, it's a running joke my mom used to always say because we want McDonald's, right? Because that's what you want when you're a kid. McDonald's was like a treat back in, mm, we're not going to say how many years ago. But my mom used to always say, uh, we're going to 579. And I was like, that's our home. That's right. That's the <laughs> I'm going to 579. And I'm going to make this burger and do all those things. But I think with this generation, I don't know, Olympia, if your daughter may have been able to relate, you're able to share things before the internet, before social media. Like kids were doing things that we grew up doing, mm -hmm. going outside. Like yes, that yes. a thing. You know what I mean? Like it was a thing. You saw. I don't know about you guys in the in the stores. Bikes. You they, were gone. Bike. they were gone. All the all the outdoor activities that we grew up with. You know, the kids. I felt like they got to see it again. And I hope. I really hope that they still stay active. I really do. Um, yeah, I to your point. Matthew. I'm sorry, how did everybody in your house? Did you have to cook more or was everybody in the kitchen all at the same time? Look at her face. <laughs> ladies, ladies, listen to me. I've got two boys in college and then a daughter. And the boys, I don't I don't know where they put it. I, <laughs> and it's not that they want snacks, they want meals Ooh. every hour. And yes, so in answer to your question, it was a lot of cooking. A lot of like big like crock pot meals, like a crock pot of chili or a crock pot of soup or a crock pot of um, spaghetti or whatever, just because it was just nonstop. Um, but I'm also I'm very grateful for it because my kids were raised. Um, I'm a health coach on the side, so my kids were raised in a very diligent way to eat. So that they don't get fast food unless they pay for it themselves now. But when they were younger, they never had it. In, in their lives unless they went to some kid's birthday party or something. So it makes me it makes me happier when they're eating something that I cook because I know what went into it. Yeah. But again, they're college age. So my other my middle child would come home with a, a, a bag of bojangles and be like try to hide it from me. And I'm like, oh, and then, it's your money, bud. If that's what you want to eat, I just whatever. But uh yeah, so there was a lot. My grocery bill easily tripled um, mm. with them being home. For sure. Holly, do you think they just wanted mom's cooking because they've been, you know, away for so long and now everybody being back in the house, they're older and they can appreciate that more? They really do. They do. When when they would come home, they were working during all of quarantine because I said, you know, I'm paying rent at your college places, so you need oh, to reimburse right. me. I mean, I was really, they had to all work and give me their rent money. And so they would come home from work and be so, I'm, I'm the meanest mom ever. Uh, no, you're right. I'm with you. I got to on, right. on social media for that very thing. I'm like, you got to pay something. Yeah. You got to help me out. I mean, I got money going out and you guys are eating everything inside. Um, so they would come home and they'd be very appreciative. My middle child loves food. And I mean, I say that like he really loves food. So he would come home and be like, oh, salmon and broccoli. Yes. You know, like, <laughs> so I think he really did appreciate it. And now that they're gone, it's funny because they'll FaceTime me and be like, how do you make toast? Um, how do you make eggs? You know, they don't know how to do anything because mama took care of them for so long. So <laughs> they're making their own meals. And now I think it's like the little light bulb. But they're like, 
wow, she did this every meal for us, you know? So there is a definitely a, um, an appreciation level there. And my oldest is, um, I, sadly, he went to Tulane in New Orleans, so he just had to evacuate. But he's getting his master's in anatomy, and he is you know, FaceTiming me making like ramen noodles and stuff. And I'm like, Oh boy. Uh, so yeah, he's, he's back to the college menu, <laughs> man. Well, I, I always love to cook, but there are a few other things that I was able to have time to focus on a little bit more because we were at home so much. Did you guys pick up any new hobbies or get to focus on anything that you had been neglecting for a long time? Well, hmm. for me, I started back, um, I love thrift, going thrifting. Uh, so I started working on multiple projects. So I picked up a lot of different things and some things I was able to sell to some of my family and friends because they're like, ooh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Something just to keep me busy. So that was definitely something I kind of got back to and just kind of expound on as well. I, I make all of my, you don't roll your eyes at me, ladies. I, I make all of my own um, deodorant and household products because I'm really You need to get with you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm really weird about what I put in my body and on my body and the skin is the largest organ. So I make my own deodorant. And um, so I didn't start like a side biz. I've been doing that for a while, but it just became more um, a, a need thing because we couldn't go out. I mean, you could always oh, go yeah. to Amazon, of course. You could always order stuff online, but it just became now I'm like, oh, we have resources right here that we, you know, you don't really realize you have. You kind right. of become very resourceful during something like this yeah. where you make, you make everything spread a little bit, you know, thinner and things. Oh, I can use this for this. And oh, I can do this. Oh, I didn't need this, you know? So well, um, I saw I saw a meme where a lot of people started using natural deodorant during the pandemic because they could. They afforded some grace like, time for the body <laughs> chemistry to adjust because they were at home and not around people. Yeah, uh, they were able to try it out. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, oh no, I can't possibly go out without regular without deodorant. <laughs> So I, I'm with you on the natural products. Unfortunately, I just ordered all of mine from Amazon and yeah. ordered <laughs> groceries from Amazon and tools from Amazon and gardening stuff from Amazon. I had boxes coming in literally every day. My husband was like, uh, what is it? It's That's my dog. Go ahead. <laughs> it's, it's the Amazon guy again. Order, spend, spend more money at all. <laughs> So, Mel, are you gardening now? Spend more money during the pandemic? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Are you gardening now, Mel? Am I what? Are you gardening? Well, you know what? I always do like seasonal things. Um, mm -hmm. I have an herb garden. I'm, I'm kind of Holly-ish in that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm according to that I'm now an adjective. I'm kind of Holly-ish. I, I, I do my own herb garden every year. And so it was, you know, right around that time. So I was able to do that. But I did, um, I did get out in the garden and I, you know, my mom usually comes and helps me or she usually does it. And I actually got out there one day and started pulling weeds. And like the next thing I know, do not tell anybody, I actually started enjoying it. And before I knew it, I was like, like enjoying the dirt, like things that you just never in a million years think you're going to enjoy. My, it was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And for some reason, though, that didn't translate to this summer. I need to get back out there and do it. It's been too hot. But I did. I did kind of get into it. Yeah, I, have a I got a tower garden at the very beginning of the pandemic, yeah. maybe like February of last year. And I thought, now's the time. Because at that point, we didn't know too much about things. So I was afraid of getting produce that people were touching or that were on a truck yeah. and who knew, yeah. who knew how many people were touching it and people were, were, you know, grocery shopping and touching their mask and then touching the fruit. And I was like, Oh, so I got a tower garden and I love it. It's one of the best things I did during this whole thing. Cause I just go out to my deck and I, you know, trim my lettuce every day. It's, a, it's amazing. And you can grow whatever you want. So I'm really a novice with it. So I just grow lettuce and kale and, and spinach is kind of tough to grow, but I do green onions and jalapenos and uh, arugula. So, and basil. Um, so I just go out there and trim it. And, I, and it's kind of like, I'm not a green thumb at all. I kill every plant I've ever had. <laughs> when it me. Me so for me, the tower garden is like a big success. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you're gonna make me Google that, Holly, because I'm like a tower garden. Oh, Can it's amazing! It's so cool. Cool. And all I do is add water and nutrients once a month, and I'll, I'll send you guys a picture of it when we get off this. I'll send it. It's amazing. 
Okay. Fun fact, I actually did a voiceover commercial for, for Tower Gardens during the pandemic. I didn't know what it was. That's the only yeah. reason I know what it is. So pretty cool. So one other thing that happened during the pandemic was everything went virtual, Zoom, you know, uh, StreamYard. Did anybody like have to go to church via Zoom or have association meetings or family meetings on Zoom? How'd you guys feel about the virtual connection? Well, I'll, I'll go first and say, it's kind of crazy because we're on this virtual platform yeah. currently right now at the moment. But in the beginning, it was like, oh, it's cool. And then yeah. it just went to like Zoom 2.0. Like everybody wanted to Zoom. You know what I mean? Like it was like Zoom birthdays. And after like the 10th yeah. one, I <laughs> was like, like oh, okay. let me tune in and not show my face. Because it's like, oh, how are we looking on, you know, looking on camera, things like that. Um, but I just feel like, you know, also from this, we now have another way to connect with people yeah. that we never really thought of. So now there's no reason to uh, miss meetings or do anything like, that. oh, you just log in. Right? Like, you know what I mean? like, so, I mean, I thought, you know, at the beginning it was cool. Then it went through that phase because I feel like everything was Zoom. Like yeah. Everything was Zoom. And there's like, are people going to know how to interact with people? Once right. we get back, you can't, everybody doesn't want to do a Zoom meeting. Everybody doesn't want to, like, they want, they need that interaction to now I'm like I do like that it's here to stay it's not going anywhere it's yeah. here to stay and it's a way to connect with people and in different businesses you can like have an extension with your business that we weren't able to do and now now we can do that and see family members and you're not going to miss graduations like to be able to see stuff like you know what I mean like yeah. weddings or whatever it is someone just okay there's a zoom link you there's can go zoom here link. and check it out so that's I found it hard to adapt to the mask thing. Like we have eye contact, but it was startling to me how much facial expressions, um, you know, are really important. It's just, it's difficult. Like we, we could talk through a mask, but it just doesn't feel the same. Like sometimes, have you ever just gone like this to say, you know, don't tell the, the health police, but have, you ever, <laughs> but have you ever gone like this? Cause you feel like you want somebody to see what you're saying, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. It's the weirdest yeah. thing. Or you mouth the word hello and you're like, oh, and you're fake and you're like, oh, they can't see me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, how, how much is this? How much yeah. is this? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, met a, I met a guy at the very, um, well, it was probably summer of last year who was at Whole Foods and he came up to me with tears in his eyes and he passed me a note and he said um, he was very sad because he was deaf and he never learned sign language properly. So he read lips. Wow. And he, I, I was, he looked really lost and I took my mask down and I said, are you okay? You know, and he passed me a note and he said, I, I read lips and I can't, I, I can't handle the masks. Like he was very, I forget what the note said exactly, but he was very appreciative that I lowered the mask for a minute so he could talk to me. And I never thought about it until I got in the car and I almost cried because I was like, oh my goodness, what's this doing to the deaf community? Like yeah, they so rely so much on facial expressions, not even if they're not only just re reading lips, but they rely on, they're very exaggerative with their movements and stuff. Yeah. So they rely on that. And when you're covered like this, I mean, you can, they can only see our eyes, you know? Um, yeah. So I never even thought about that with the masks, but yeah. And you know, to your point, Holly, I had that exact same situation with my, with my niece, my niece is deaf and we were taking her back to her school in Spartanburg. And I realized I'm like, okay, she reads lips. So I found myself pulling down the mask and talking to her because I never learned sign language. And that's one of the reasons why now I'm going to start the classes so that I can learn because I realized we don't have a way to communicate with her because, she, you know, we depend so much on the facial expressions and being able to mouth things and it creates a barrier with her and the family when we can't do that. So definitely I understand exactly what you're talking about with that. There was, there was a lot of innovation. There was a lot of innovation. I heard that there were clear masks for that purpose. And there were a lot of things that happened that might not have ever happened really just to help us get through this unique situation. So I know we're going to wrap in a few minutes. One of the things that we haven't touched on real quick, relationships. How was it um, with your significant other in the house or if you're in a long distance relationship? I know, Madison, you said you got married. Did the pandemic push that forward or backwards? Actually, actually, you know, I was living my life. 
Um, <laughs> Cause we've been together four years and for him, it was because he had changed careers. Uh, he's in law enforcement. So we know that situation and what that climate looked like. And for him, it just became like, why, why am I waiting? Why, you know, why, why are we waiting? And for, for me, it's, I've never wanted a wedding. People say that and some people, oh, you don't, I don't no, no, I mean it. I don't yeah. want but when you know how much that costs, we can have a house. We can like, I just started going like, well, all these, we can invest. We can do these different things. But the pandemic sped that up because now you made an appointment and it can really, it was just us. It was no one else. It was just us. So then you take out all the other filters of yeah. people who kind of come in and turn it into not saying it's bad, but take it to another level and you're all stressed out. And it's really about you two at the end of the day. And we'll probably do something down the line, but also I saw it to stress out my, my brother who just recently got married because they had to push it back. You have this wedding plan mm -hmm. and all the people who wanted ceremonies now had to rethink that. You know what I mean? What does that look like? What does the guest look less look like? You know, I want my, my parents to walk me down the aisle. I want like yeah. all of these, you know, things became, I think a lot more important. So, I think for some relationships, for mine, it was amazing. It was beneficial. I do have some friends that it wasn't necessarily that because you had to learn your partner because you realize in life, you may not really know who you're with, right? If we're going out on dates, we're going to movies. And the, well, well here, here's Kingston, everyone. The <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you go out on dates, are you really talking? You watch, are you really getting to know you know what I mean? You're really getting to know that person. So some people had to do like a deep dive and go, do I know you? <laughs> really? Well, my, husband's, my husband's worked from home for the last like seven years. So I don't want to hear anything from you people that are severe spouses. <laughs> uh, no, nothing, nothing changed on that front for us. He's worked from home for so long that, um, it's it's really didn't change his life didn't change at all it's amazing wow. he's like i'm not affected by this at all. i'm like yeah because you're not cooking and okay um, <laughs> but yeah my husband actually worked in healthcare for the first part of the pandemic all the way through december he was actually working in a peds clinic and oh, wow. was, was managing the workflow there and so i had the fear factor of him coming in and out of the doctor's office every single day. And then of course there was added stress with what was going on at work for him. So trying to like not create stressful situations when he got home. And then um, after the first part of the year, he, he switched and started working from home in healthcare. So it was him and myself and my daughter who began her PhD program from home last wow. year virtually. So we were all like literally at, at at some moments we would get um better wi-fi we like there was a lot going on in my house at one time but um again i found it really really important we actually like each other and so during the day everybody kind of went to their respective um corners and then at night it was kind of like meeting at the dinner table or in the kitchen or whatever to talk about what went on during the day so it actually worked pretty well you know we wanted some we wanted some air sometimes but but it was actually pretty pretty cool i don't know life on lockdown hasn't been so bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know Olympia had to step out because of course we're all on air and getting ready to get on air and all that kind of stuff. We are looking forward to more conversations. Hey girl, let's talk. We've got lots of subjects to talk about you guys. We're talking about aging parents. At some point we're going to talk about marriage and relationships. We're going to talk about fitness and finance parenting, all sorts of fun topics coming uh, coming up. And there's going to be revolving seats. So all of our uh, female personalities on all of our stations are going to participate together at some point. Um, sometimes a, a two of us are going to be paired up. And so we're really looking forward to more Hey Girl, Let's Talk. And I hope you are too. Let's close you guys with maybe um, if we can go around the room, starting with you, Madison. What's your biggest takeaway from life on lockdown that you can carry forward to the rest of uh, the year be be in the moment be present yeah. with what's going on presently um it's it's hard but i really have to stay focused of this is today and let's deal with what's going on yeah. today so yeah holly how about you i would say this should be a real huge eye-opener for 
becoming the healthiest you you can be and trusting Mm -hmm. your immune system and strengthening that immune system. You know, we learned, like we talked about earlier, eating, eating at home and preparing food at home and fitness. And Madison and I, Madison and I agree on all of this. And we're going to talk about fitness in the future, I know, and health in the future. But this should have been a very big wake up call. This isn't just about um, masks. This is really about our health. And we do need to live in this moment and, and take care of the body that we have. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with both of those. And I would say that really to find your peace and protect it and make sure that um, it, it lives at home with you because there's so much that we can't control um, that when you come home, you want to be, you want it to be a, a soft place to land because, um, you know, we might have to be back at home for some time. I don't know. Hopefully True. not. <laughs> we'll see. Life on lockdown. We made it through y'all. It's Hey Girl, Let's Talk, Radio One Charlotte and Urban One Company. Thanks for hanging out with us today.